So, here's the first thing I want to ask you is, when did you start playing drums? I started playing drums when I was about 15. Mm -hmm. yeah. What I got started, you started? I started at the Coney Island. Playing at the Coney Island, different, different Coney Islands, you know. Mm -hmm. Play gambling, play games, domino, house game, bingo. Did I start from? So and you just started playing? You didn't have any training? I used to watch, I never have no training. I used to watch Donald Jarrett. A big all-star band used to be in my house practicing. So mm -hmm. I used to go over there every day and sit behind Donald Jarrett and watch him. And then I start playing a condensed can in my house, one of my house. Mm -hmm. And the, the, and my bass drum is a board box I use. <laughs> wow. <laughs> And condensed in playing my finger until a guy named um, Prover, Lionel Prover, he make a drum for me. Make it out of plastic ply mm -hmm. and iron hooks. He make all the pedal. But he could make the hi-hat, I could get a hi-hat, you know. At least those times I used to use no hi-hat. The snare right. drum and cymbal. Mm -hmm. One snare drum, bass drum, one cymbal. Never have a tam tam and all them things. Mm. Until one of the time, Gabriel said that Val Bennett needed a drummer and feel like I'm do this, fill the space. So, alright, try it out. Played with Val Bennett band. That's the first band I played with. What was the guy's name again? Val Bennett. Val Bennett. Yeah, and from his band mashup, playing different, different, all different kind of groups. Uh, five piece, four piece, you know, until I start playing Eric Dean's 12 piece band. Three. What kind of music were you playing in those early bands? We used to play um, Glenn Miller music and Count Basie music, all those jazz music, mm -hmm. and a lot of Latin and cha-cha, bolero, begin, you know, until that gone again. And we'd been in Cecil Light for about 16 years, Jocelyn Trot for about five, different, different bands all around. And what kind of audiences were you playing to with those early bands? People like us. Yeah. Yeah, you know, sometimes it wasn't mostly like bar. We used to mostly play in the bars and get pay from the bar mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. until we start a country and do some country gigs down at the board. You have to know Calypso though. Yeah. Uh, them like them Calypso country. Come on, soon you pay them one, rub up Calypso and jump up. Jump up? Mm. <coughs> yeah, man. No, no electric light night, I know. Mm -hmm. It was a carbine lamp. That's all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And no, no amps for anybody? No electricity. No. Banjo. Banjo, trumpet, saxophone, bass, drum. And a singer who know the calypso of them. So uh, then you started playing with Eric Deans? Yeah, I started to play with Deans. And from Deans, Justin <coughs> Trapp. Riff Mort, a lot of band I play with, man. Mm -hmm. A lot of band. When was the first time you uh, played with Brevet? Remember, we've been playing together from Berg's Boys. We're always in the same group. So, through those early bands? Coney Island. Yeah. All of us come from the Coney Island. And we meet up in Dean's band. We meet up in. in, 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 in. All different bands, man, and meet up. Worse when we're going country. Mm -hmm. It's always in my use. You know, so both of us are always together. Wow. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I know me from boy, man. Everybody know me from boy. Yeah. Sterling, Brevet. So I used to go to Greenwich Farm, Brevet Grove. I used to do fishing in, you know. I used to have two boats. I'm do fishing in. But after a while, leave them go to the Bay. Play with Justin Trot again. Me and him again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Until in the studio, rivet again. Here, rivet again. 
When was the first time you were in the studio? The first time I've been in the studio was when I was in Montego Bay and I used to hear these music over the radio. And I said, boy, and then I was going to go to Kingston and do this thing. But anyway, when I wasn't working in Montego Bay, I went to Kingston. Mm -hmm. And then I go up by the studio. And then, who I met? Duke Reed. And I start to do some things to Duke Reed. <coughs> but after a while, Coxon said, I like to like change the beat, you know. From the mm jump, 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 the guitar plays scare still. Mm -hmm. But the mm jump, mm jump, mm jump, mm jump, mm jump, 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 jump. So I came in and it hit me. I said, well, this sounds like Latin to me. So I start some play some Latin flavor, mm -hmm. second and fourth beat. And say, yes, like that is it. And from that, I changed the beat. To ska. To ska. Drum digger was playing drums all the while for all the people them. Mm -hmm. So when I come out with the new beat, everybody start to use me. Drum digger, set up a police, set him down, send him down to the school studio. Police come, one come at the back, one come at the front, and <coughs> come to lie name. Police. Well, I had a hound serving me. So when I was going through the back door to the police, I just slip it out of my pocket, because I have a shaman in my hand, slip it out of my pocket and drop it on the shoulder. A guy pick it up and go out there. The same pocket I go in, take it out, is the same pocket the police come. <laughs> Them tell me his drum digger do it. Wow. Him dead after. Mm. Tight. So what did he do after you I became? Eh? You, what after your beat became what everyone wanted? Obviously, he couldn't find work so easily. But what did he end up doing? Oh, uh, drum bago. He died. He died. Like how soon after that? About a couple of weeks. Oh really? Yeah. Really. A couple That's weeks after that. God struck him. <laughs> the car struck him. God. God struck him. <laughs> Yeah. How did he die? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Then it was not big friend. Right. I guess not. You know, guy was his worst, worst enemy. Yeah. When, when did they really start using the word ska? Well, from the studio, the guitar goes ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh, and Chloet always says ska boobie. That's why we have a record of the name yeah. of the CD ska boobie. Is from those dates coming from. What well, I'm scared of So it's a name, Itan. So to read us, scatter light. <coughs> I just say satellite, and Tommy said, No light, you play scat. So it's a scatter light. Is that right? Cool. So Clue White always just said scavuvi. It's like, How is it going? Yeah. You know? When did, the, when did that jump to the, the music was known as ska? Well, they call it ska first. Before he said ska boobie? It's in that time they call the guitar goes up, cha, 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 cha. So they so, call it ska. So before. It was a so kind of. But it's not a ska beat. It's more it's a, a swing, shuffle, shuffle. shuffle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they still called it ska. Yeah, through the guitar. Even before the beat yeah, now that yeah, we would call yeah, ska. Yeah. So when the beat come in, we call it ska beat. <coughs> so I cut for everybody. Randy's, Duke, Beverly, Duke, Coxon, Buster, um, all of them, Curry, everybody, I alone, I live in the studio. Every day I go on the studio from 10 o'clock to 5 o'clock in the morning. Wow. Yeah, man. Sometimes I cut 18 tunes per day. Sometimes Every day 10. of the week? Every day I'm in the studio. One time I was coming from the studio, going home. All I can hear, ba 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 Prince Buster behind me. <laughs> you know, call him on, you know. We have a session for the money, you have to turn back. I said, no, ma'am, I'm going to eat my dinner. I said, no, ma'am, I'm buy dinner. <laughs> so I just turn back. So, 
session. Session wow. every day, man. Every day. Sometimes uh, we have two sessions for the day. In different studios. Mm. You told me one time that <coughs> sometimes they would record tracks and then bring you later yeah. to play drums. Yeah. When I used to work on a ship, Duke would always do some tune with the next drummer. But when I come, him take off that drum and put me on. So I just have note me here phone and play. You'd hear the rest of the band? Yeah, I hear the rest of the band through my earphone. So I just pick it up and go on, fully. So they were recording how many tracks at that time? More than four. one? Four? Yeah. When did they start going four track? What year would that have been? Oh boy, <coughs> it was about in the, in, in, in the 60s. No. Four track is about 50, 50 something, 56, 57. Okay, so all of the So one at a time does one track, you know. Patin always one mic for the whole band and the singer. Mm-hmm. One. So everybody have to stay around the mic and play and sing. But and then pick it up. So they had four four tracks, but they only had one mic? One mic. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <clears throat> Gone, gone good now, you have all the whole tracks now. Can always, if a man make a mistake, you can dub it in. Those days you couldn't dub in nothing. Right. Those days if one man <coughs> wrong, you have to stop the whole tune. But now if a man wrong, continue. Because mm -hmm. can't put him, him thing now. Right. So those days, the, them, them things couldn't happen. Couldn't make any mistakes. And did you leave everything in the studio set up? The way it was, never change, never move things around, just so anyone could come in, cut a track, the next day without my drums. I have to travel with my drums. You brought in a your own kit. Student and my mom no drums. Okay. So I have to travel with my drum to his studio. This guy used to play for Bob Marley. Mm -hmm. Him used to when I come at you, him said, "Don't trouble the drum, brother." And him go up there and set them up. And him stay beside me and sew her from a pipe. Them time I used to lick up, you know. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I, I, I right now the, the drum boot with me. So I so him get to learn, like, what his name there. He used to do a boom out to me. You mean Carly Barrett? Ka Carl Barrett right. is him. And then, what his name there now, he used to sit down behind me. Sly? Sly. Sly boom out. How old were they back then? A little youth, them, man. A little boy, Kids. them. Kids. <coughs> and sit down right behind me in the drum there, like what I used to do with, um, as I tell you, the big band, and I sit down behind Donald Jarrett. It's the same thing, him to be behind and watch me. Would they be 12, 15 years about old? About that, about 12, 15, about yeah. that, you know. Mm -hmm. What are some of the sessions that really stand out to you, or the tracks that you've made? If you had to pick a few that you really are your well, favorites. I have no favorite, all of them nice, my man. Mm -hmm. All of them nice, you know. Especially Dan tune them. Dan tune them all was a killer. Roland tune them. Tommy tune them, you know. And when you were recording those tunes, did you just learn them there at the studio? Right at right on the spot. Right. You might run it down two times. And then said, Ready, cut. Red light. And we go down with it. Sometimes it's one cut. Sometimes I say, all right, this one all right, but don't rub it out, take the next one. Yeah. And eventually, they have to keep the first one. <laughs> <laughs> That's really fast. Yeah. So, was it when Don Drummond had to leave the group that the Scatolites stopped being the Scatolites? No. Same Scatolites. You continued after Don? Yeah. Don died and gone to peace. So we still get a trombone. <coughs> Just get an extra bonus. Oh, okay. Mm. And so, the it was uh, when he went to jail first, or to institution to, to, first. It was in asylum. I used to pick him up at asylum, Bellevue, mm -hmm. and carry me in back when you know when we come back from session. So you were able to, uh, while he was at the asylum, mm. he could come away to record. Yeah. yeah. Ah, so you only had to find someone else. For live gigs, or could he come out for the live shows? Yeah, man, 
Yeah, man. Okay, I'm a little. But after I'm a while, lot right after now. a while, them them take him out of asylum and him leave somewhere in my Margarita. So we used to take him tablets. But the night when Margarita was going to um, go baby grand to dance, she never remembered to give me the pill. So he wake up before she come from work. Because I never like her dancing, you know. Mm-hmm. Never like it. Well, have them talk. And when she come now, she go back out to the taxi to buy food. But them things that she can't do anything with the taxi man. Well, when she go in, she see my gusso with a knife a sharp net. So she eat him. Him not say nothing. And all of a sudden, him just stab her the knife. And leave the knife stick up in her dress. Guy come out of the house, come call me. Lady, Dan kill Margarita. I'm going to go around the house and I say, I'm, I'm, I'm walk now, I'm brief, go down the station and say, somebody dead up the road. Him came himself down the station and I'm brief, you know. <laughs> and say, somebody dead up the road. When the case tried, Dan don't say a word up to now. Till him came back to Bellevue. Well, when him name the drummer's claims that they kill him in a Bellevue. Never bury that evening. Cause we got Madden, everybody, mm-hmm. and the brother Guan bad call Malcolm. Guan so bad, cause if I bad word them kill Mark, they kill, they kill them, kill him, you know, asylum. Ah can all kinda of things. So them him to the parlor and everybody come out. Nobody know where Dan Berry. No one know where Dan Berry. So after that night Scatterlights continued or not? Yeah, man, yeah, yeah man, yeah, man. When, when did that happen that Don killed Margarita? It was 63. 63? About that. 60, sometime before the band. So very early. Yeah, man. For Scatterlights. Mm-hmm. <coughs> but it was 63 you started calling the group the Scatterlights. Something like that, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you were saying, I think, one time to me that the reason you started the group as the Scatterlights was to do live shows because you'd been recording together with different people right. without the name. But what happened now? Tanama came into the picture and Tanama no to worry. We won't we have managed all the theater them in Joe Kingston. You know. So we always play every theater. So it's that bring me out on the road in theater. Until we start play Beaumont. Wednesday and Saturday, so Wednesday Friday night. You know, most of Saturday night, Wednesday night, Orange Bowl, all around Kingston. So how often? You would give a few times a week live? I would play four or five times, four. man. Yeah, man. We go all country. And still recording during the day. And do recording, yeah, man. Very busy. See me. We have the band on the road and we do, still got the recording. Wow. As a studio one band. When did uh, when did you start working with Jackie Mitu? Jackie started. Everybody started <coughs> one time. In the studio. This group started one time. Tommy's the last one came in. He came from Nassau '62, and I introduced him to Coxon, and I'm start the session. Then Roland never liked me for that. He called me calling Tommy, but it's two different blowing, you know. Tommy have him style, Roland have him style. Mm-hmm. Tommy have him proud over this, Roland have him proud over this, you know. So, <coughs> it was so. Um, I think that was a rivalry that pushed mm-hmm. both of them. Mm-hmm. You know, having some competition means you work harder. Right, sir. Man, blow up some on, man. <laughs> and did you say one time that uh, when you. It took a few times to convince Tommy to join the group? Right. He told me, Lady, we were coming from the studio. So we were going up and the hill got smoke. So we, we, as we, as we reach up and say, Lady, everybody hear the music over the radio every day, you know, and we like to, the people that want to see the people that are playing the music. They want to hear the name, but them don't know us. So he must find my band, Lady. He said, What? Listen now. 
me can read music, you know, on the drum part, me not know not about arranging and all them things. So if you can be the leader, it would be all right. He said, well, I have a contract with um, this guy, Aubrey, Aubrey, play piano, up court the man. So if he can wait until he got contract up, it's about three weeks after the contract up, so he said, can do it. So I make arrangement to make, have a meeting up by a theater. I think it's what And then we have a meeting, everybody came up to name the band. So we named the band right this one, took off and the theater there. So we started. So in that original lineup, when you decided the name, who were the people at that meeting? All the of members. us, all of us, Johnny, Jackie, Tanimo, Rivet, me, Tommy, Roland, Lester. everybody, yeah. Everybody was there. And Judge Jerry was the, the main guitar? Judge Jerry was, the, yeah, Judge Jerry was there. Judge Jerry used to play guitar. Did Ernest Wranglin, was he part of the group or sometimes? No, no, no. He, he come to the studio. Okay. If a certain tune them call Ernest. Cause Judge Jerry still play with him. Mm. Right. Mm. You know, so. So the band came yeah. out and everything cool. Mm -hmm. And Baba Brooks? No. Not yet. Baba Brooks never in there. Missing with Byron Lee. No, okay. don't do that. He won't do studio work. No, but don't do that. But he never come out on the road right. with us. Okay. Because he didn't yeah. see. Right. Yeah. Just one trumpet. Two trumpet, Dizzy and um, forget her name. Dizzy. Um, I don't remember her name. I don't remember her mm. name. But yeah. it's two trumpet. Mm -hmm. Two trumpet, two tenors, Lester on three, alto. Three alto, three saxophone, three brass, <coughs> four of them, four vocal. Who were the vocalists? You used to have Tony, Tony, Tony Gregory, Tony DeCosta. Doreen, Jackie, Jackie Opel, <coughs> and Tanamo. So everybody have them different tunes I'm saying. Right. And uh, Scott Campbell? He was a scammer. Ah, 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 ah. That's all I'm doing as children, nothing else. Now and again, we'll get a solo. I'm solo good too, you know. Mm -hmm. But his job is to keep the scale going. I'm saying his scale kill him. <laughs> Did he play with you live? Was he part of that? Live, group? man. Yeah, in, 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 in my, he's on every session. But, uh, he's on every session. Okay. Even if it's not Coxon, everybody knows Campbell always there to play the scale. Right. So he's always on the session, man. Who was it that played harmonica on some of the, the old tracks? Um, this guy come from California, um, Aganir. We call him Aganir. He's in Calif. He's in um. In a California. I think he's somewhere in um, Miami, maybe. Okay. Think. What was his name again? We call him Arganier. We play. Harmonier? Arganier. Arganier? Yes, Arganier. 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 Yeah. yeah. And back in the Skylights era, Jackie was playing piano all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Organ wasn't until. No, Argan coming last, you know. Mostly in rock steady? Or in. It coming after a while, yep, bringing Argan through. The harmonica used to play Hagen. <coughs> so till Hagen come in, the harmonica gone. And then when you had... Hagen and piano. Hagen and piano. Hagen and piano. You know, Jackie. When you had both, he'd play both mm. at the same time? Mm. Okay. So only one keyboard player. Jackie was the only keyboard player. Only keyboard player. And he was the musical director of Studio One, I've heard? Well, he test the guy who can, who can sing and who can. Okay. We'll send him to Jackie first. And Jackie will run them down. It's all right, you're cool. And you wouldn't can come. Come back next month. Cox will tell one of them come back three months' time. He didn't 
he saved Coxon from having to listen to everyone? Coxon not to listen to nothing. They, they, um, Jackie listened to tune and said it's all right. I mean, I'm running down, it's all right. And Coxon was there all the time you were recording or some of the yeah, time? Man. All yeah, the man. Time? Coxon is there all the way. Mm-hmm. And Lee Perry was his studio assistant? Yeah. We used to tell him speaker box them and all them sound system thing. Lee Perry used to do them things. He, and did you call it toasting back at that time when he would go, ooh, fire? That type uh, of thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. In my stitch. You, would you call that toasting at that time? Mm. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not tongue tied since I went Oh. <coughs> I am not him no man. <laughs> was the term blue beat used blue in Jamaica? Blue beat was with that Chloe Johnson, bass player. He came up with that term? Them call it, them call it, Mr. Cox make that name. I don't know the name come about, but it's Chloe Johnson and the blue beats. That was the name of his band? Yeah. Okay. Recording for Coxon. And then there, so before people called it ska, it was Blue they, Beat. They knew the music as Blue Beat. Yeah. From his band, the Blue Beats. Yeah. And then later there was a label in England, Blue Beat? I think so. I think so. But that was named, it wasn't That's where Clare the term Johnson. came from. Okay. Clue Johnson think was where Blue that. Beat is Clue Johnson. <coughs> Uh, one question I have was, uh, you talked about when you changed the beat with mm-hmm. Coxon. Now everybody calls that style of drumming one drop. No, now, maybe that come out of reggae more. But one drop is in reggae. My only second and fourth. The beat is second and fourth beat. Is mm-hmm. reggae the uh, same number uh, of bars as? Same it? thing. We only slow down the tempo. So the pulse is the offbeat. He just slow the tempo down to get reggae and rock steady. That's all. Rock steady you now, you have a one drop. And I have a different thing to play sometime. Instead I go so, mm, pop, mm, mm, pop, I go so, chuck, 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 chuck. Everything go down one time. Mm-hmm. I play that a couple tune. Any time I see a tune and match that beat, I play that beat. But if it's too no much that beat, I don't play it. Right. With a little thing in the middle, you know, my Latin touches. Yeah. Mm. You can definitely see the influence in uh, Carlton Barrett's playing. Yeah, man. Very similar to what you did. You, a lot of drummer playing like me, one of them comes and says, Lady, I can't understand any of your bass drum, you know. I said, well, why do you have to feel it, you know? I can't tell you. <laughs> yeah, because the bass drum is not constant every beat in the sky. It's not. Uh, mm, 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 it goes, mm, 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 the stick is constant. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I get hit this. Callous? Mm. How the stick don't drop like so, like all them guys do. It sounds like. You have to drop it from here, so and you have to mute it. Mm. That's a mute the skin when it's drop. And did you always turn the stick around and yeah, play across yeah, the drum? Yeah. But back in, say, earlier era, like the blue beat era, the shuffle, yeah. people still crossing the stick on the snare? No, or when you have to hold the stick, so no, that time. No yeah. rim business. Just hitting the snare, the you drum? You have to just play like you play jazz. Right. So crossing the stick, was that when the beat changed? Right. You turn the stick around? Right. And you rim business and a rim shot something. It was not 83 when the group first reformed? Yes. For Sunsplash? Yeah. How did that come about? Well, it so happened. That synergy want over sun splash. But they want the scatter lights. So I'm up for send for Johnny, send for Roland, send for Sterling, and track the two and get back everybody together. 
and we went to buy Herbie Miller, the Herbie Miller place we went to reverse, up half a tree with it. Reverse of the fair week. <coughs> sure. <coughs> and Herbie Miller have all that anti hunting there, you know, video. Video? So, yeah, I'm not released, I'm not trouble at yet. I want to see that. That's the best one with everybody. Yeah. And the crowd in the place. You know, because it's three nights straight to play up there, you know. And three nights people couldn't come in, they have to stay outside and enjoy the music outside. <laughs> Just the music from mm -hmm. that is released as stretching out? Yes, that's it. That's it. Now, all of that is on video. All of it is on video. I'm Herbie, what is one of five, $5,000 Herbie gave Tommy when we just came here? And I must have get most 400 out of it or something like that. But from that, no more money come out of uh, We don't get any more money from 5,000? And that was it. And then it, it stretch out now two different things. Um, no. There's two different versions. Mm -hmm. That's an excellent recording. Mm -hmm. I'm amazed so that that's that was live at um, the studio at um, Herbie Miller. Our place, eh? Blue Monk. Blue Monk, mm -hmm. right. Blue Monk. And at the time in '83, were some people already living in the U.S. And, or everyone was in Jamaica? Um, Sterling wasn't living. Sterling wasn't was was living in America. Sterling left Jamaica from '73, and then Roland leave after after satellite breakup, mm -hmm. and then '85. Tommy leave. So it's only me alone was in Jamaica. I'm Brevet. I'm, I'm Brevet. Me and Brevet alone. And what y'all leave at 86? Me leave at 86. 86. 86. Yeah. And when you moved here, did you know that Scatolites would be active? That is the reason why. That's I why you here. moved? That's why I was Tommy sent for us, Herbie Miller was bringing up a band. And I'm just group in a lot. Mm -hmm. So we'll get the visa and we'll reach up. And you'd been to the to America before? No, never. No, never? First time. Wow. Where was the place? What city did you come into first? Bronx. I was living at my brother's house for a week. So your first hello to the US was New York, the yeah. Bronx? It was Jersey. I got from 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 my brother out in in, in, in the Bronx for a week. And then I, I come to um, Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. I'm from Brooklyn to Jersey. I'm from Jersey to where, I'm, where I am now. Cambridge? Boston. Boston. So then you, uh, you moved here in 86. Mm -hmm. Right away the band started touring? The tour starts, we start tour from 92. 92? Mm -hmm. yeah. So you were here six years? No, yeah. I went. Oh. <laughs> well, we hardly was getting any work, you know. So I used to do construction work. I'm mm -hmm. brevet, used to do mason work. I mean, include Tommy into it too. Get a little money a week time. Tommy and would do that work as well? Yeah, man. But I'm slow. Can't paint. <laughs> Take him all five deep, five hours to paint a little place. So if we don't work, and come help him. <laughs> 92 was the first tour? The first tour with Bonavilla. No, 89 was Bonavilla. 89? Yeah. Oh, 89 now? Yeah, my dad was there. With Bonavilla? Yeah. That's right, 89. 92 was the first tour with just Catalytes as a headliner. Mm. You know Did that tour in 89 go into... We opened for Bonavilla. Okay. And that was throughout the US? Yeah. The first time I saw Skylights was, I think it was 90, Jackie's last show in Toronto. Oh, yeah. Was that 90? Mm -hmm. Probably. Was that part of that tour that... No. Just a one-off date? Probably. Yeah. yeah. Part of tour was 89 or did that tour in Bonavilla. And then 92 was the first Skylights headline mm -hmm. tour. Yeah. 92, August. We left for Europe, August 11. Uh, no, 
Was it, I, I almost lost that tip. No, I almost did. I almost did. I waited about three and a half weeks mm. to four weeks in Europe. Mm -hmm. Started out in Belgium. Along the way, followed the route, France, wherever. Holland. I had a problem that every year we reach Europe. Yeah. Every year since then. Mm -hmm. And in uh, 92 as well, you did a US tour or later? 93? No, 93 was a US tour. Okay. That's when Ken came along. Right. Mm -hmm. Was that 93 when that uh, video that was available at, in Providence? Ken's playing. You know what I mean? I think There's no, a video tape. Really, no Providence, no? Church House Inn? Church House Inn. Church House Inn. Yeah. 93? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's a good one, too. Just to jump back a bit, when was Return of the Big Guns recorded? 83. 83? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just after Sunsplash? In this place at that time, God, it, it, um, that recording do for Synergy, same one. It was done? Synergy. Synergy? Yeah. That's a company? They pay us for that. Synergy is the company that puts on Sunsplash? Yeah. Okay. So Synergy made the album? Yeah. With you guys? Yeah. And it came out on Island originally? No. No? Return of the Big Guns. We do it at um, with the place name of Port Royal way there. I don't remember Brad Charlie. I don't know it's um it's Port yeah. over Port Moore. Port Moore, is that what uh, the record? Port Anderson. Port Moore? Yeah. No, Port, Port Man Anderson. Port. We didn't record there. We uh, practice or practice there. Practice. And then we got um we went to we after that. We used to do the session with um Music Mountain. Oh yeah, Music Mountain. Was the so studio? Chris, it was Chris Stanley's Chris Stanley's studio. He's dead now. Died almost his complications. Mm -hmm. So those songs as well, you would just learn them right there and record them. Yeah, just man. like the old day. Yeah, man. Tommy always have the arrangements. Tommy writes a set of tune and bring them come and mm -hmm. run them down. And you just he'll show you one. You get on that, record it, yeah. leave it, right. show it, learn another song. Yeah, record it again. That's we'll a really good record. record. Yeah, yeah, man. Are there any other albums that you guys did <coughs> between then, between Return of the Big Guns and the first one for Shanaki? No. 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 The Big Guns and Shanaki thing. Four CD. Shaniki. Four? Yeah. Skavuvi. Skavuvi. <laughs> High Bop Scott. High Bop. Is it Anniversary? Is that the same? High Bop? High Bop. Greeny Skamania. Skamania. And the next one, I don't know again. I don't know what name is. I thought uh, there were three. I think it's four. I must have missed one. Huh? I must I must miss one. Must be. I must be. And but after that we don't know no more we, the last one we do know is in Paris, already. Right. So there Paris was the last one. Yeah. The one for Ireland was right before that? No. The one for Ireland. Bashaka was right before that. Bashaka is before that. We that was that for in Miami. Stama. Stama. And you're not working with him anymore? No, no, no. Didn't work out? Never know. Work, never work out, good boy. <coughs> we don't get a penny from you. If I get paid CD, uh, I have to take my pay for the CD. So I have the CDs selling now. I right. know, you know what I mean? He just gave you CDs. That's your pay? That's my pay. And before Bashaka was, I forget what it was called, Ball of Fire for Island? Oh, yeah. Ball of, Ball of Fire for Island. That was the one first after uh, Shanaki? Mm -hmm. The Shanaki mm -hmm. ones, then Ball of Fire. Yeah. Okay. How was it working with Island? Why? Tell me, mess it up, man. <laughs> that would have been a good gig. Tell me, mess up Island. the whole scene. Island, when we was in Jamaica, Island was going to give us 500 US a week. And then take me over. And I don't pay me that 50 grand. Tommy said no, push back well one steel, steel. 
Then when we do the recording now and come to England, twenty-five pounds check coming. What? Twenty-five thousand pound coming out of my hand. A check for the band. And Jackie and Tan and, Ta and, and, and Tommy talk to this guy Shaper and take all the thing from Ireland. How the man spend the money for the thing? He turned it over to, to Shaper. So Tommy make I give back the people them the twenty five thousand pound. That's Ireland. Give back to Ireland. Ireland does shelter the rate breaker. No.